Endeavour Houston, we see a nominal Miko. Welcome to space. Soyuz is an absolute workhorse of human spaceflight and was developed in the Soviet Union during spaceflight's earliest days. When I say Soyuz, I'm referring to two things, the Soyuz rocket and the Soyuz spacecraft. The Soyuz rocket is used to launch Soyuz spacecraft as well as other satellite payloads. Currently, Soyuz rockets launch from Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan, Plasetsk Cosmodrome in Russia, Vostochny Cosmodrome in Russia, and Guiana Space Center in French Guiana. Soyuz rockets are assembled horizontally in a hangar near the launch pad. They arrive at this hangar in pieces called Block A, Block B, C, D, E, and F, and they're assembled like this. First, with the upper and lower halves of Block A being put together, then Blocks B, C, D, and E are attached around the outside. Then, Block F with the payload on top is attached last. Let's have a look at the engines on the central block. At first glance, it looks like it has four large engines and four small engines, but plot twist. All of these nozzles and combustion chambers are fed by the same fuel pump or turbo pump, so this whole setup is actually one engine. The four largest nozzles in the middle are fixed in place, so to provide steering, the engine has these four smaller vernier thrusters. Each can swivel like this to provide steering. The side block engines are virtually the same, but each has two vernier thrusters instead of four. Once assembled and ready to launch, the Soyuz rocket is rolled out to the launch pad on railway lines. It's then lifted vertical at the launch pad, fueled and launched. Soyuz launches consist of three stages. The first stage consists of firing the central block A and the four blocks B, C, D and E attached around the outside. Then the four side blocks separate, starting the second stage, which is just continuing to fire the central block A. Finally, the third stage is block F firing. Rather interestingly, the third stage starts firing just shortly before separation. This is done to make sure the fuel is being pushed into the back of the fuel tank so it can be pumped into the engine. When a Soyuz spacecraft launches on top of a Soyuz rocket, it is shrouded in an aerodynamic fairing. On top of this aerodynamic fairing is a launch escape tower. This is a rocket motor that can pull the spacecraft to safety if anything goes wrong with the rocket beneath it. Just before first stage separation, this launch escape tower is jettisoned. From now on, if the crew needs to escape during the launch, there are motors around the outside of the fairing that will fire, pulling them to safety. If a launch escape is triggered, then grid fins around the outside of the fairing will deploy to keep the spacecraft stable while it is escaping. If everything goes according to plan, two and a half minutes into the launch, the fairing will jettison. Eventually, when it reaches orbit, the Soyuz spacecraft will separate from the rocket and then deploy its solar panels. The Soyuz spacecraft has three modules. The orbital module, the descent module, and the instrument and propulsion module. The descent module has seats for three cosmonauts, and those cosmonauts have access to the habitable space in the descent module and the orbital module. The instrument and propulsion module, however, has no habitable space, as it is entirely taken up by, well, instrument and propulsion equipment, and that includes the main orbital maneuvering engine called SKD, or in Russian, Splazayshe Kriktirishya Dvigatil. SKD has this cover over it which gets uncovered whenever it needs to fire for an orbital maneuver. These days, Soyuz flights take cosmonauts, astronauts and supplies to the International Space Station. To dock with the station, Soyuz has an automatic docking system called KURS. If something goes wrong with this system, the crew inside the Soyuz can take over and perform a manual docking. The front of the orbital module contains the docking mechanism. The mechanism that Soyuz uses is called SSVP, which is an acronym for Sistema Stokovki Evnoitrenego Pedakoda, which is Russian for System for Docking and Internal Transfer, 
It works using a probe on the Soyuz spacecraft and a drogue on the docking port at the International Space Station. The drogue is a cone-like structure so that when the probe bumps into it, it gets pushed into the middle where it can latch in. This is a soft capture. The probe then retracts, pulling the Soyuz into the docking port. Then hard capture latches in the docking rings can latch together. The probe and the drogue both open up as hatchways between the ISS and the Soyuz. Once Soyuz is ready to end its mission and it's undocked from the ISS, it will perform a deorbit burn using the SKD engine in the Instrument and Propulsion module. This deorbit burn occurs about half an orbit away from the intended landing site in Kazakhstan. After a successful deorbit burn, the Soyuz will separate into its three distinct modules. The descent module, where the cosmonauts sit snugly inside, is the only module that will make it down to Earth's surface. The other two modules are doomed to their fate of burning up in the atmosphere. During re-entry, the Soyuz descent module will fly heat shield first, but at a slight upwards angle. This helps provide a small amount of lift, keeping the module in the thinner upper atmosphere for longer putting fewer g-forces on the crew compared to a quicker, ballistic descent straight into the thicker atmosphere. Once the descent module has cleared the fiery rigors of re-entry and it's dropping straight down, it'll deploy its one massive parachute. It also has smaller backup parachutes in case this main one fails. At an altitude of 5.8 kilometers, the descent module will let go of the heat shield, exposing six solid rocket motors underneath the module that will aid in cushioning the landing. Initially, the descent module will be hanging at an angle under the parachute to assist the airflow in dissipating heat, but as it gets closer to the ground, it will shift into an upright orientation for a safe landing. At an altitude of five and a half kilometers, the systems on board will begin to equalize pressure inside the module with the surrounding atmosphere. At an altitude of just 0.7 meters from the ground, the solid rocket motors on the base of the capsule will fire, softening the impact, and we have touchdown. The mission has come to an end. If you're a fan of Simply Space, consider supporting me on Patreon, where you can get some early insights into new videos and access to an exclusive Discord server. Until next time, I'll catch you later.